brand expert Phil Palin. Brand expert Phil Palin. Hello. Look at all of these. Look at all of these beautiful faces here. Thank you for waking up early. Well, not that early, it's 10 a.m. But still, there's a lot of places you could be right now. One of those places is bed. But instead, whether you're here in the room, you're very lucky, by the way, we had almost 400 people RSVP to be in this room. So whether you're here with me in the room right now or you're at home watching, you could actually be watching and in bed, so that's a good deal. I welcome all of you. Thank you for joining us. I am so excited to be here. Uh, I have been pretty busy since we last saw each other. Uh, what have I been doing? Well, I've been branding people. That's exactly what I do as a brand strategist. So since I graduated Full Sail 2011, uh, I have opened up a branding agency. I'm a speaker. I travel all over the world. The perks of having a job that allows me to do my work wherever I want, right? Uh, I help people position, build, and promote themselves. By show of hands in the room, who has been to a session with me before on campus at Hall of Fame or in, in, in the past? Okay, so a few people. Well, I'm so happy you're here today because if you've seen me speak before, you know I talk a lot about branding. Today, though, because it's Hall of Fame, we do things a little bit special. I'm branding one particular person. And you know who that is. He's standing in the wings. Before I get to that, I want to tell you just a little bit, just to kind of get us warmed up. Uh, I've been at it for eight years. It's eight years since I graduated Full Sail. Since then, I've worked with 254 clients in 25 countries. So over the years of doing this, I have learned a few things. Uh, I have learned three important things that I'm going to share with you before we start this amazing experiment uh, live on stage. So what you're going to have to do as part of this exercise, you are going to actually build a brand with me for, OK, fine, I was going to leave a dramatic intro, but it's Leslie. We're going to build a brand for Leslie together. How does that sound? Sounds good. So what you're going to do is you're going to go over to my Instagram, and on my stories, I'm going to have you interact. In fact, you're actually, by the end of this session, you are going to vote to decide Leslie's brand. So if you're here in person and online, I want you to hop over there right now and introduce yourself. I want to know who's paying attention, who's here, who's a part of this experiment. So go over and introduce yourself, and then we're going to get right into it. Let's start with tip number one. I mentioned I'd give you three, and then we'll get into this experiment. Tip number one, this isn't a hobby. I have learned this since graduating Full Sail in 2011, the difference between a hobby and a brand. A hobby is something you do for yourself, something you get enjoyment out of. But a brand is something you do for others. I use the terms brand and business interchangeably. So as a student or as a recent grad, or really, even if you're not connected to Full Sail in any way, shape, or form, you might have a job that you're in now, you're thinking, okay, how can I take something that I absolutely love to do and turn this into a career? This is the moment, and I'll give you the formula, this is the moment where you can make some really important decisions that will help determine the trajectory of your career hopefully doing something that you love to do. At the end of the day, we're all here at Full Sail because we're pursuing something we love to do. And I'm here with a gentle reminder to make sure that whatever it is you love to do, you pair with something others need. Something you do for yourself, something you get enjoyment out of, that's a hobby. But something you do for others, You've done a little bit of market research to know, okay, there's a need for whatever it is I do, whatever it is I offer. That's when a hobby becomes a brand. Story time. This is me now, but this was me in 2011. A few months before I was set to graduate Full Sail, I studied Entertainment Business Masters, and I, like many of you, before I was set to graduate, was really nervous, very keen on trying to find a job, because me also as an international student meant not only did I need to find a job to pay rent, but I also had to find a job 
to stay in the country. By show of hands, who's international? Anyone here? Pop up your hand. Okay, a few of you. Excellent. So we have that additional pressure, right? <laughs> so a few months before I was, you know this story, and I'm going to keep it short. A few months before I was set to graduate full sale, I entered a competition along with 90,000 other people. I entered to win, or entered to be considered in a competition to become Charlie Sheen's social media intern. This was at the peak of his craziness in the media. Maybe you remember this, Tiger Blood. Well, thanks to Full Sail, thanks to my friends here, um, I used the facilities here to film my entry video, and it turned into a whole social media campaign. Very long story short, I was on the Daily Buzz as a guest. I did all kinds of crazy things. Long story short, I made it to the top 50 of this competition. Now, the story is long, and if you want to know the full story, you can Google it. But I didn't do the internship. It was through Full Sail that I also had another opportunity that came up to potentially intern for Ryan Seacrest, and that was really my dream. That one, I actually got fired from before I even started. <laughs> I like to make a splash out of things, you know? So one week before I was set to move to LA, uh, I got a call. I was at Universal Studios, I'll never forget this. I was at Universal Studios, the phone rings from an LA number, and it's an assistant that patches me through. She says, uh, Phil, can you speak to Tony really quickly? And I said, sure, so she patches me through. And I'm on the, I'm on the phone with the vice president <laughs> at Ryan Seacrest Productions, and he says, Phil, Ryan isn't happy. So I was equally mortified, but also excited that Ryan knew who I was. <laughs> what happened was I had generated too much noise. There were press articles connecting Ryan Seacrest's squeaky clean family brand with Charlie Sheen's brand of strippers and drugs. So I was fired from my very first job. <laughs> and I couldn't really talk about it. So it was a very quiet summer for me. I moved to LA and thought, okay, well, what am I going to do? How am I going to pay my rent? And so that's exactly what I did, was I figured out how do I create a brand? Not a hobby, because people don't spend money on hobbies. They don't even necessarily spend money on wants. When people spend money, it's because they need something. And in that moment of the transaction, in that moment, they've convinced themselves that they need this, even if they really don't. I started a business. I didn't work for anyone. I started a business designing logos and making websites for personal brands. This idea of personal branding was still relatively new. Right? There weren't a lot of people in this space, and that's what I've done since the beginning, and it's worked out all right. So now I teach, uh, and it was teaching that actually in LA that got me comfortable on stage. It helped me start to develop my methodology that now I teach to all of you. This is a picture from my very first Hall of Fame when they invited me back as a guest, 2013. Look how nervous I was. <laughs> I sat up on a panel, and since then, you know, Full Sail's been really wonderful in bringing me back and allowing me the privilege, you know, to share some of my ideas and concepts with you, to help you launch, to help you get out there and have success, not even as soon as you graduate, but let's start it now, even before. So, we talked about this, the difference between a hobby versus a brand. Let's move on. Manifest your goals. What do I mean by that? I want you to take this moment in time right now to think about the most important thing. I even see pens and papers. I see you guys taking notes. I love that. The most important thing for you to have clarity on is your goal. What is your goal? Think about that. You don't even have to know the exact answer, but you should be starting to think about that right now. Because when someone comes to me, regardless of level of fanciness or success in the industry, it could be someone just starting out or it could be someone that's very famous on TV, regardless, I can't do my job as a brand strategist until you are crystal clear on your goals. What is it you're trying to achieve? So really think about that and, and, and try and have some clarity on that because then and only then can we actually build a plan to get you there. I believe that branding is not just making things look pretty. Branding is the most powerful business tool that we have available to us, and here's why. When we've got clarity on how we're positioning ourselves in a way that's going to help us achieve our goal, so we've got clarity on the goal, then we start to build the brand, which we're going to do for fun on stage today. 
as we're building the brand, we're working towards that goal. And as you're building your brand, photography, brand identity, website, colors, all of these elements, right, that help convey who you are and why anyone should care, as you're building these assets, I want you to think about branding not just who you are today, but who you want to become. Where do you want to go one year from now, two years from now, five, ten years from now? So I believe branding is the most powerful business tool that we have available to us because you can manifest your goals by branding you tomorrow, not just today. So actually, take this moment in time right now to hop over to my Instagram story. If you're watching live, you can do it now. If you're watching the replay, I'll have this saved as a highlight on my profile. But I want to know, in one sentence, the fewest words possible, tell me what is your goal. Do it right now. Go there right now, at Phil Palin. You got the handle right there. Tell me your goal. Because we can't do anything until we're crystal clear on what that goal is. And while you're doing that, I'm going to tell you a fun little story. How about that for a hairdo? My first job, I mentioned I was an international student. I'm from Canada. My first job, I was a TV host. OK, I don't tell this story that often because it comes with very embarrassing photos. So you're welcome. My first job, I was a TV host for a kid's show back in Canada. And the concept was students and teachers swap roles. In the first season, I was a teacher. Uh, and the second season they invited me back, I was the vice principal, and I was the host of the TV show. And that's how I fell in love with entertainment. That's how I knew I was going to Full Sail. I was going to study entertainment and go work in Hollywood, which is kind of what I did. Uh, but I had a lot of clarity early on that I wanted to be a TV host. So I got fired from Ryan Seacrest, moved to LA, and printed this photo on an 8 and a half by 12 and thought I was going to become a TV host, since that's the world that I wanted and that's what I you know, to be honest, what I really wanted to do. Now, what happened when I got to LA, got my headshots, there we go, photoshopped, <laughs> got my headshots in hand, started to mingle and build a community with TV hosts, aspiring TV hosts, and I realized, wow, these people would spend their days, their weeks, going for auditions, up against hundreds, sometimes a thousand other people for one job. And I realized quickly that actually, I don't think I want it as much as other people that are willing to do that. I'm somehow going to have to pay my rent next month. So what I decided in that moment, even though I really wanted to be on TV, I wanted to be on stage, I wanted to be presenting, I knew in that moment that I had to just kind of put it on the shelf temporarily. It wasn't the right thing for me to do. I needed to be a little bit realistic in that moment and ultimately circle back on that dream. So what I did was I, instead of pursuing TV hosting, I kept that community because I really loved it, and I positioned myself to help TV hosts build their brands, their websites, their social media strategy, and that's what I did for a few years. I identified a niche market, one that I really enjoyed, and I you know, really studied every day, read articles, became more of an expert so that I could help these people and build their brands. And by kind of rocking a niche, identifying my audience and building a business where my audience immediately identified themselves, that helped me grow likely quicker than other people. So I remind you, manifesting your goals. It might not happen overnight. If you want to be a movie producer, that's great, but it doesn't mean you're going to do it the first day out of full sail. You're allowed to have that dream and you're allowed to pursue it, but what I want to pair that with is also some realistic perspective on how you can position yourself to satisfy a need like every good business does. Keep that goal, which is exactly what I did. And while I didn't work as a TV host, it was three years later that someone who I built a relationship with by the name of Robin Radin, um, I ended up actually, by not pursuing TV hosting and building my brand helping TV hosts, got a gig where I was teaching TV hosts how to do all of this. Robin was a fellow teacher and became a great friend. And she actually hired me to build her brand. Oh, it's a very simple one-page website. And it was two years, maybe even three years later, 
when she uh, actually sent me a text at six in the morning and said, Phil, haven't talked in ages, how are you? Quick question, do you know about uh, Kim Kardashian's feud or latest scandal? And I texted her right back and I said, of course I do, isn't it outrageous? I didn't, I didn't know anything about it. I texted her right back and she said, fantastic. Hop in an Uber, because she knows I don't drive. Hop in an Uber and head to Access Hollywood. We're gonna put you in the lead story tonight as an expert. <laughs> now luckily, the Uber ride from Santa Monica to Studio City is an hour, so I had a lot of time to do my research. But this was a full, so full circle moment. So it was about two or three years after I moved to LA and I did my very first Access Hollywood appearance. I went on TV, in front of millions of people and spoke authoritatively about <laughs> a topic. And it, it was fun. I was really nervous. Hopefully you can't see it. But in that moment, which was all of, you know, 10 minutes max, five, 10 minutes, uh, in that moment, my dream had come full circle. And because I was a little realistic in the beginning, but kept on to it, knowing that this would happen, no, not necessarily as a TV host, but as someone on TV, right? Doing speaking, doing media. As I was walking towards the elevator to leave, I was just, oh, so excited. Robin comes over, she says, Phil, really quick before you go, what's your lower third? What should we call you? And in this moment of genius, I turned around and I said, celebrity brand expert. And now I do media as a celebrity brand expert almost every day, <laughs> at least every week all over the world. CNN, I think I have that one in here. Yep, I'm in this article. CNN, you know, all kinds of stuff. And that was how I manifested my goal. I wanted to tell that little story because it really all started here. Third tip for you. I like those who are taking notes. The third tip for you has to do with consistency. Now, a lot of you know I talk about personal branding and I talk about effective personal branding, which is done by achieving one thing. Consistency between the in-person experience, which I have the privilege of being here with you in person today, so the in-person version and the online version of self, which I have the privilege of being with all of you who are watching at home. <gasps> We, as personal brands, and you are a personal brand whether you like it or not, it's 2019, you don't get the luxury of deciding whether or not you have a brand. You have one. If people are looking you up online, you have a brand. The goal here is to be clear on your goals and then to achieve consistency between who you are in real life and how you present yourself online. Very simple. Let's break it down as a science, shall we? Each person here is made up of two things. Content, what you say. The second thing is personality, how you say it. By show of hands, who thinks content is more important? And by show of hands, who thinks personality is more important? Ah, this is a smart audience. Personality, I believe, is your secret weapon. Content won't keep us coming back to you alone. It's how you say it that keeps us coming back for more. So I'd like to use this analogy with a fun little visual. Branding is a lot like dating. Okay, so go with me on this one. Let's say we're on a date. We're on a date from Tinder, okay? So you find me and you read my profile and you think, hopefully you think I'm a babe, and you read my profile and my description of how I describe my personality and all these things, right, okay? You've consumed the online version of me. And then we meet in real life. I'm very excited about this. We meet in real life, and let's say I am nothing like how I have presented myself. Let's say the photo I used, not this one, let's say the photo I used was outdated. Let's say it was from 10 years ago. You show up and you're like, damn, he's old. <laughs> let's say it was completely wrong. How positive is that experience for you? Not so positive. Branding is exactly the same thing. Which way would you swipe? Left. Does anyone remember who my date was last year, by the way? Hall of Fame 9. His name was Fernando. He was inducted last year. He's back this year. He's one of my very favorite people. Last year on stage at Hall of Fame, I decided to brand Fernando. 
And we came up with the coolest little brand for him to emphasize his personal brand, which was a simple one-page website called soundslikefernando.com. You can still go there. He's still got it. So we did all of this. We did this exercise live on stage, and that inspired me to come back and do it again with a new subject. I thought I would check in with Fernando really quick to see how he's doing. Hey, Phil. This is Fernando from Stickman Sound. A year ago, you branded me. Since then, I've had the great fortune to be able to travel all over the world. And uh, by doing all the things that you told me to do, we've noticed a major increase in our social media following and in our marketing campaign. Love you. Please give him a round of applause. <laughs> Fernando is amazing. Uh, I love that he's followed everything I told him to do. The exercise was great. Let's do it again with a brand new subject. I'm going to welcome him to the stage right now, and we're going to do it right here with all of your help. Please put your hands together for Grammy Award-winning mix engineer, Leslie Brathwaite. Hey, babe. Hey. I'm so happy you're here. I'm happy to be here. Oh, hey, boy. Who is this thing on? Can you hear him? Check. Can y'all hear me? There we go. So here we are. Here we are. I have wanted to do this for so long. And might I, this is an inside joke, but it's not going to be inside because I'm going to tell you the joke now. I have owned LeslieBrathwaite.com <laughs> for years. In real life, though. For real. <laughs> for real. Yeah. And any of you, which I'm sure most of you are following Leslie on Instagram, you know in his bio, it says you should, what does it say? You should pay attention. Yeah. Because Phil Palin said so. So we have this little running joke, right, where I've informally branded him, but now it's happening. This is happening, and you guys get to be a part of it. So what we're going to do over the next few, it's ridiculous. Yeah. What we're going to do over the next few minutes is I'm going to do with Leslie what I would do with any other client, which I would call a brand audit. This is when I sit one-on-one -on -one with a client, and I try to listen for those little nuggets of gold that become so invaluable when I'm building a visual brand. It all starts with a very simple conversation that you're going to watch us have. And we're going to be listening. All of you are brand strategists here and watching. All of you are brand strategists. You are a part of this. You will get to weigh in and make decisions to help build this brand. Got it? So put your brand strategist caps on and let's begin. OK, first question for you. Um, if you had to introduce yourself to someone in an elevator that you've never met and you've only got God, how many, how many minutes until the floor that I'm going to? Maybe one minute. Mm -hmm. How would you summarize who you are? Who I am? Uh, I would start with my name. I would say, you know, hey, how you doing? I'm Leslie Brathwaite. You know, um, I'm married. I have two kids. Um, I'm a mix engineer. I live in Atlanta. Um, I would definitely mention Full Sail and how I love coming back and giving back to Full Sail. It's a huge part of my life. Um, the three places that I usually am on this planet at all times are either in Atlanta, in a studio working, at Full Sail, or on vacation. <laughs> and that's it. That's true. And we know yeah. if we follow you, we know that's true. That's true. So, okay, so let's, let's start to kind of organize how we communicate this. There's different facets of you, right? Mm -hmm. So we have the work, Leslie, and we have the mentor, Mm -hmm. Leslie, would you say those are kind of the two, and then obviously personal Leslie, family, and all of that? I call it like I call it work Leslie, uh, full sale Leslie, vacation Leslie. <laughs> yeah. In a nutshell. I love it. Okay, yeah. great. How I know? Well, let's talk about your work. Okay. Highlights. Um, what are you most proud of? If you look back at your career, give me a few of the moments. Without thinking too hard about it, what are the first moments that come to, to mind when I say, what are you most proud of? Uh, first moment I can probably think of that I'm most proud of is when I was able to l sustain my life off of mixing records or, or recording at the time, uh, doing what you love and able to pay a bill and to you know, write my rent check. And that, that was a huge moment for me to be able to realize the dream of actually being able to sustain life by doing this. 
Um, another huge moment was the moment I met Michael Jackson and Bruce Wadeen, and probably actually more importantly, Bruce than Michael. Even though I was a huge Michael fan, Bruce actually did what I wanted to do. So meeting him was like, I was more nervous to meet Bruce than I was Michael. So that was a huge moment. And then I um, actually just recently had a very huge moment. Um, I let my youngest, Isabel, take my Grammy to school for show and tell. <laughs> uh, you know, all the kids who had to follow that. Um, so, but she's a huge Cardi B fan and the clean versions, of course. <laughs> <laughs> And um, she was really, really, you know, I, I have other Grammys, but she wanted to take this Grammy to school for show and tell. And it was a really cool, I got very emotional watching her um, sit up there. And, and what's funny is she had 10 minutes. She took one minute and bragged about me as if, like, I, I posted about it. She bragged about me like I was an Avenger. Like, I felt like Iron Man at the end of, but she, what, what the... The proudest moment, though, was she took the other nine minutes and she bragged about, essentially, she didn't even realize she was doing it. She bragged about the things she learned from me. So she was talking about, uh, she mentioned one time how my daddy made sure that we went to feed the homeless one time and da da da. So all these things that I'm teaching her that I hope she grasped these lessons, that's what she spent the rest of the time bragging about. So that was a huge, huge moment for me whether even personally, but tied into my career. Great. So. I love that. I love stories. Stories are a great way to listen for little anecdotes and little moments that make for great visuals. So we'll circle back on that. But that, that's a great story. Mentorship is super important. You talk about, obviously, yes. raising children, but also we know you have a reputation on campus, which is in, in, a big part of why I chose you for this experiment. Everyone knows who you are because you're very gracious and humble and giving. Let's talk about mentorship. How do you mentor students? How do they find you? What is that like? For me, mentorship is a three-part thing. It's, it's the students. It's also being here to support the staff and faculty that pour into these students, and I'll explain that further. Yeah. And then it's also to the parents. And for me, that touches home for me, because my mom in particular did not understand this path that I wanted to choose, and she was like super against it. So for me, my mentorship is kind of like a triangle, where I come back, I try to give back to the students, uh, anybody who knows me or been around me long enough here on campus knows that I come. I try to mix projects on campus. I invite students in while I mix. I do my best to help with staff initiatives. I'm always like trying to help out with, I'm on the PAC board, the uh, program advisory committee, and just trying to help shape the curriculum and help with the staff and admissions and, you know, all this stuff. And then my, one of my personal missions is the parents and, and the prospective students and the st even the students that already enrolled and their parents are still iffy about this path and it's about trying to speak to the truth of it, not trying to sell a false dream, but just speak to the truth of the matter of this is a passionate thing. This is something that, you know, so it's, it's a triangle for me. It's the parents, the staff, the students. Great. How, this is more of a technical question, how do people get in touch with you if they want a little piece of Leslie? Because everyone wants a little piece of Leslie, don't we? <laughs> how? Um, Where, how do they find you? I think my main method of communication these days has been either Facebook Messenger or Instagram. Okay. Uh, direct messaging a lot of times. But yeah. how do you have time to do that? Because you're, you give so much, you're here, you participate. How do you have time to message people? I don't. Okay. So a lot of times I fall behind. A lot of okay. times I run into people and I tell them, look, if I don't respond or if it takes me long to respond, it's not an indictment on my heart. It's just yeah. an indictment on my schedule. So I remind, I remind my fellow brand strategists that we are listening for those authentic moments. We are listening for goals. I'm not doing this exercise for fun. I'm listening for a goal or an opportunity where branding can become a powerful business tool. So I'm interested in this inefficiency. Leslie, as for as great as everyone is, you don't have time to be messaging people one-on-one. -on -one. So that is something that identifies maybe, you know, a way, something to consider as we build a brand that helps Leslie manage all of this. When do you have time to work? When you are here on campus, how do you find the time to do the projects that you do? Well, the beautiful thing is, because of what I do, by nature, we love to work at night in studios. Mm. So all the stuff I talked about with like staff and the program advisory committee and all this stuff, that happens in daytime hours. And then I come on campus at night and I mix records. 
So a lot of the mentoring happens in those sessions with the students. I tell the students they can show up and I, they watch me work and then I take questions and da da da. So I try to fit it in night versus daytime thing, you know? Love it. Fellow brand strategists, you're listening not only for goals, but a description. When someone kind of takes you to a place, we think, how can we capture that in visuals? So I don't know about you, but I want to see Leslie at two in the morning on campus or in the studio working. I want to get in that mind of his. Um, so just a little note, something to think about. As I'm kind of listening for things that I would incorporate with the branding, that's one of them. Last question for you, and then I want to get into photography. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, I'm going to share a little experiment we've been doing and reveal some of the elements that we have built, and then you guys are going to weigh in. Important question, and there's no right answer to this, but why do you do what you do? Uh, why do I do what I do? Um, I think there's a very um, primal um, desire, a primal thing that I think it, to be honest with you, I, I don't know how to put a pulse. Pulse is an interesting word, but I don't know how to truly capture the answer, but I love music to my core. I also equally love, I understand what it is to be super passionate about something that um, a lot of people may not understand. Um, I have a very different view of the world and how we tend to just, just our school system is designed to produce uh, followers and not critical thinkers and not leaders. And so everything works against you from the time you're in kindergarten. And a lot of times society and just on a whole is built to, to counteract our authenticity. And so I'm a huge proponent of people finding their authentic thing. And so that's where the mentoring thing comes in because I wanna help people tap into that I really understand how important it is to be authentic, to walk in your authenticity. Um, so just those two things, just my, my pure, just unbridled joy for music and me understanding what it means to tap into your authenticity. Beautiful. So this session would normally go on for 90 minutes, but we don't have that today. So in the interest of time, we're gonna move to the next step, but can you give Leslie a little round of applause? Fellow brand strategists, do we have some material to work with to build a visual brand? I think we do. I think we should start. So the next part of this, um, as you know the process, right? So we start by positioning. We have a very simple discussion just like this where, honestly, the best sound bites come from conversation like this. Not always with someone you know really well. We happen to know each other pretty well and we're great friends, but it can be with a total stranger. What I want you to do is listen to yourself in those moments, right? The contrast between sitting in front of a Microsoft Word document and not knowing, okay, how do I write a bio? Where do I even begin? To you, in an elevator or wherever it is, telling me in one sentence or two who you are and why people should care. Conversational opportunities often make for the best sound bites. These are great for tweets. These are great for Instagram captions. They're great for your about page, your home page. Those moments start to build that inventory, okay? I, I could listen back to this, you know, 10-minute chat and pull all kinds of stuff that I can repurpose and build my consistent brand online. So after we feel good about positioning, then we move on to the build. And I always start with photography. Now this year, I actually called on the help of a very talented friend of mine. A shout out actually to Kevin Abel, who let me use his photo of you while I interview you. Mm -hmm. And also another photographer on campus, Sean Reinhardt, who's in the room snapping photos, but now he's got a microphone because I'm forcing him to come up on stage and join us. Sean, come on up, give him a round of applause. <laughs> I'll take off Do the camera. you want camera. a chair? I'll take off the cameras. Yeah. He's Here. armed. Great. <laughs> take That's off great. your weapons. Come sit with us. Grip on the <laughs> weapons. All right. So, Sean. Hey, buddy. Hey. We get to hug, too. I'll call you babe. I call everyone. Hey, hey babe. Lesson. <laughs> hey, brother. So, Sean. We, we're watching the time lapse uh, on screen of you working with Leslie. I asked for your help. You've been so gracious and amazing. 
Uh, can you tell me what's happening on screen, what this moment was like? To capture Leslie in his environment. That was the task that I gave you. Yeah, I think, um, <laughs> one, I'm listening to some epic music you can mixed say. by this epic guy, right? <laughs> you can say. So, so I'm, I'm listening, <laughs> and then I sit down, and I'm constantly, I was doing the same thing in this room, I'm constantly looking for angles. We're, what, what's behind Leslie when I'm shooting? What's the composition? And then I start to think, okay, well, we have all this light. What if we turn out the lights? And yeah. so you see that going on right now. Yeah. And then always have a tripod because I'm shooting most of this with just the existing light. And so when it was dark, you know, I put the tripod up and there's students in the room. Yeah. And this is what I love about this man. And so when he asked, I was super busy to do this. And I thought, I just said yes. Right, say I'm so yes more than you, you say no. And at, I don't know, nine o'clock at night, he texts me, I'm in the studio, I go over, and all these students are sitting behind him. And I love that, and so, of course, we're gonna get a shot of that, yeah. because that's dear to our heart. And you also, you at dinner last night, I didn't even know this story. We had dinner last night, and you told me the most amazing story about one student in particular that you witnessed. Can you tell that story? So, most of the time, I don't know why I'm in the room. I'm just snapping pictures and trying to be artistic, and I get to meet Adrian. He's here, right? He's in the He's room? Here. He Hello, Adrian. Give him a round of applause. This is a great story. So, I didn't know this story. I added this in my slides at 5 a.m. Yeah, so Leslie goes, hey, I have my Grammy. Do you want to get some shots of that? And I'm like, uh, yeah, I think I'll take some shots of the Grammy. That sounds awesome. So he pulls off the Grammy, and I'm taking some shots, and he's just mixing, you know, it's, it's no big deal for Leslie. This is just his world, right? We're just trying to capture it. And then I look at the students behind him that have been just sitting there quietly. When he asks them if you have any questions, they have very intelligent questions. And by this point, it's probably midnight. And I look at the students, and I said, hey, what month are you guys? And it was like, I'm month 20, I'm month 21, I'm 19. And he, Adrian, said, it's my first day. My absolute first day was today, and I go, winner, winner, chicken dinner, you get to hold the Cardi B Grammy, and I took that <laughs> shot. How at, cool is that? First day. First day. Yeah. Yeah. At full you know sale, and Adrian is holding the Cardi B Grammy won by this man right here. And full disclosure, it's not like I'm just walking around with a Grammy in my car all the time. <laughs> I brought the Grammy to present to Full Sail. We're going to leave it here on campus, but we decided to present it next month instead of when we were here last month. And so I just happened to have it with me still. So I'm not just rolling around with Grammys all the time. <laughs> what I would say about that, though, is th I felt like that was my purpose that day. It, I'm shooting photographs, and we got some cool shots of Leslie. But man, to give back yeah. like that and yeah. to have that Grammy sitting there and give it to Adrian to hold on his first day of school. How cool, right? That's right. full sale. It's like the perfect full sale moment. Thank you for sharing that story. Thank you also for taking some epic photos. Are you ready to see Sean's hard work? Yes. Do you trust this man to do the photography for our client? I certainly do. So let's take a look at the finished product. So as a brand strategist, I get the proofs back and I decide, I go through and I think, okay, how do I best, through visuals, communicate you know, the client based on what they've told us. There was one particular moment in our little brand audit that I thought was interesting, and I noted it to you. I want to see Leslie in the middle of the night. We see him on day with a big smile, you know, bopping around campus everywhere. But like, I want to see that, that secret, maybe more serious side, that passion that happens in the middle of the night when he's mixing, you know, Grammy award-winning work, some of the most famous albums and tracks ever. So you, took, you turned the lights off, and we saw it in a blink in the time lapse. You turned the lights off, and it captured the most magical moment. And this picture completely inspired me for the visual brand. Isn't that insane? Give Sean a round of applause for capturing this insane photo of Leslie. Yeah. When I'm building a brand, I always start with photography because I find that it is the truest, it is the opportunity to have the truest version of you. Before we design a logo, before we pick typography, none of that really matters. 
as much as seeing you in your environment, okay? And you so beautifully captured what Leslie described. We didn't even plan that. You know, you, you, you captured this place uh, that we want to be taken to. And so this, photography is always the starting point. Now, thanks to Sean's beautiful work capturing this, has inspired my team to build the complementary visuals for the brand. So now that we have uh, photography, we're looking at logos, colors, uh, the, the way that your brand exists in person and online, starting to explore that. So let's look at uh, 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 some colors that completely inspired me from these photos. I think we should go big and bold. Not every client we can pull this off with, but Leslie, we certainly can. Personality, bold, I love these purple tones, really honestly inspired from the photography. Mm -hmm. Also, the color of royalty, that's no coincidence. <laughs> so, this is the color set that we're going to rock with, but you, now you get to actually vote on the concept. We have created, my team has been working literally around the clock. <clears throat> part of my team is in LA, part of them are in London. Designer who's working with me is based in Norway. We've got all, every time zone around the clock to get ready for this moment. I'm going to show you two logo concepts, and you get to vote on which one you like best. OK, you ready to see them? Drum roll, please. There we go. So concept number one is based on a music note. Very simple, but when you start to look at this symbol, flip it around, what do you see? You see a B and possibly an L. LB, initials. <laughs> so there you go. There is concept one. Let's have a look at how this would look in execution. So we're starting to think, how can we show the logo as a profile photo on merch? Um, you know, how cool would that be? So concept one is this idea of initials. Also, Leslie, as you know from following him on social media, is notorious for quote cards. And does it very simple, black and white. And I'm going to jazz that up, baby. We're going <laughs> to jazz that and brand it. If I can brand it, I will. So concept number one is the music note. Concept number two is based on a mixing console. There you go. Concept number two. So both of them incorporate his initials, which I tend to do with some clients uh, when they have cool initials to work with. Um, I want it to be literal, but I also want it to be kind of clever, right? So we've decided the colors. We have two concepts. Now, whichever one gets the most votes, so we're still looking at concept two. I like that shot. Mm -hmm. Whatever concept gets the most votes wins. This is session one, build your personal brand. Session two, promote your personal brand, is where we will reveal the winner. To vote, you will go over to my Instagram feed and indicate one or two. Concept one, the music note. Concept two, the mixing console. You will go over to my Instagram. I've got this live on my profile right now to vote. All you have to do is comment one or two. Whichever concept gets the most votes, we will use, we will brand Leslie. And on Thursday's session, we will unveil his one page website that I will be building thanks to your help. There's a few things that I picked up uh, on, you know, in our discussion today, and I hinted at them to you, that will incorporate with his branding. Maybe, for example, that one-page website could help people access you in a way that's more efficient than DMs. Mm -hmm. So branding is always rooted in your goal. What is it you're trying to achieve? This is never an exercise to make something look pretty. It's an exercise to accomplish a goal. So. Go over here, philpallen.co slash hof10. 
I saw some of you taking notes, but I will actually email you the three tips that I shared today and also the three tips that I will share on Thursday for promoting your brand, and I'm going to add four extras in there so that it tallies up to 10 because it's Hall of Fame 10. So go to philpallon.co. So the two things you have to do, one, go over to my Instagram and vote on Leslie's logo concept. One, the music note. Two, the mixing console. The second thing, philpallon.co slash HOF10. Sign up to get the tips that I shared with you today and we'll share on Thursday. That's it. Thank you guys so much. I bet we have time maybe for some questions. I think we have, a, how are we doing for time? Do we have time for one or two questions? Look at that, ended right at 11 a.m. on the dot. Mm -hmm. Nice. I think they'll bring a mic to you. Okay, yeah, they should bring a mic, great. Yourself creating the logos, and now is that what your team does, and you're just like the the interview guy, the mascot? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we actually joke as we do introductions on a on an intro call. Uh, I've got Sam in London, and I've got Lauren in LA, and I describe what they do, creative, business development, and I say I'm the mascot. So I, when I started, I did everything um, because I had tangible skills. Thank you, Full Sail. You know, to know, even, even if they weren't perfect skills, I could jump into Photoshop and retouch a photo. I could, actually, I couldn't really do Illustrator, to be honest. So I was designing logos in Photoshop, which is a really big no-no. <laughs> but I made it work. That's the point. You know, my first website project was for a real estate agent, and she said, um, hey, I feel like you'd be really good at this. Can you help me do my website? I was like, yes. Had it ever done a WordPress website? No, but that's thanks to what you learn here, what you learn on YouTube, you find the resources, you say yes to the opportunity. In the early days, it was a very small operation. <clears throat> we still keep it fairly small because I like to think at the ripe old age of 30, I don't really want adult responsibilities yet. So we're not too big because I like to, you know, have a small team. I like to choose projects that I really enjoy working on. Now I've got uh, people that I go to to help me build the creative. However, it's not one person's job. It, it, you know, the old saying, it's not 100% uh, of one person's job. It was in the early days. Now it's 1% of 100 people's job. We all weigh in. Even though each person has job responsibilities, everyone is a part of the process. You know, so, so um, Kostya and Nick are, are, are my designers, and Ton, uh, they help me actually execute on the concepts. Lauren and I will actually come up with the, with the, with the concept in that, what we would lift from the, the brand audit in the early stages, and we all kind of work together as a team now. But it was an important moment, actually, in the early days when I decided, do I want to be a graphic designer or do I want to be a brand strategist? It became, uh, there was tension mm -hmm. when a client would come to me and say, Phil, we want to hire you, we trust you to build our brand. And then I was designing the logo concept, and they're like, actually, I don't like the logo. And then all of a sudden, I give the control back to them, and it just wasn't good. So, so the minute I decided to not be a graphic designer and actually sit in the middle of that process so our designers never actually interact with our clients, uh, Lauren and I sit right in the middle and work with the designer. You know, We went through a few concepts to even arrive at the two that I present today. When it's client ready, share it with the client and sit in the middle. So that the minute I made that transition or decided I want to be a, a, a brand strategist, not a designer, my business doubled in a year. So it's, it's a very important mindset. And I mentioned that not to brag, but if you are in a similar position, make that decision. Even though it's terrifying to think, oh my God, I have to pay someone to do this. How am I going to make money? Increase your prices, make sure it's worth it, and allow your business to grow and scale. And a very important uh, piece of Phil's answer is a huge educational gem to you guys, which is a lot of times the things you're learning here at Full Sail, some of the things you don't think you need to learn because you're focused on the thing you want to do, some of those things and, and learning those things and embracing those things can get you to that place. Having those skills, having those skills in your, in your tool belt when somebody calls on you to do the thing that you didn't think you needed to learn that can springboard you to the thing you want to do. So it's important to really take that nugget out of what his, his answer is. You know, all the stuff that you're learning is valuable. Some of it may not feel like it's valuable because you have 
a certain focus on what you want to learn. But a lot of that stuff, most of the stuff you learn here, it's there for a reason and it's valuable. And it can put you in a position to then do what you really want to do. Question. Got a few in the front row. Hey, Phil. Hey. Um, so I see you have over 200 clients in 25 countries. How do you overcome the challenges of language barriers and diversity and, and still uh, maintain to keep up with people's brands? Great question. Um, that's actually what inspires me, to be honest. Um, if, if you follow me on social media, you know I'm not in one place for very long. People joke and call me Carmen San Diego. It's kind of true. <laughs> Never know where I am next. Um, but I get my inspiration by seeing how other people live around the world and being uncomfortable. So I lived in LA for seven years. And up until the last few months, um, I, I was starting to get too comfortable. And that's why I left. You know, LA's great. But for me, it just, I was a bit more inspired by everything happening outside the world. So I got rid of my apartment. Uh, put my stuff into another house and now a rental, you know, just kind of made it work. And now I live out of a suitcase. It's a cute suitcase, <laughs> but it's small. And uh, I use, um, I use, you know, different cultures and, and those uncomfortable moments uh, as learning points and inspiration, colors, uh, language is hugely inspirational to me. Um, Making sure that I'm, I'm aware and I'm paying attention to what's around me. When I'm in an environment that's uncomfortable, that's where I soak it in and that's where I reflect. And that's really what motivates all of the work we do. Now, a more technical answer would be, so I present and I speak. A lot of times I'm teaching the branding process for an audience that might not speak English. In that case, there are fewer words in my slides. Mm. My slides become like an Ikea manual. <laughs> Do you notice? That's how Ikea does it. There's no words in the manual because they can just send it to every country. So that's why it's a little diagram. So I'll sometimes do that. I mean, I, I spoke in Japan where everyone wore uh, translators. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing, too, that's super interesting is the different uh, dynamics of different audiences. When you speak in Finland or in Japan, like people are so quiet. They also won't laugh at anything you say. So in Japan, I was wearing a microphone like this, and I was really nervous. I don't normally get too nervous, but I had to walk out on this big, long runway that was like for a fashion model, which I am not. I'm lots of things, but a fashion model is not one of them. And I had to walk out, and I was uncomfortable. So in my natural moment, I make a joke. I said, wow, this microphone makes me feel like Britney Spears. And no one laughed. <laughs> And I was like, okay, moving on. <laughs> you know, so you learn sometimes in like trial and error the different nuances. Yeah. Um, I actually have had moments where I arrive in countries and I'm like, damn, I should have done my research a little bit better. Um, I still have those moments, but having had those, I try to be aware and a little bit proactive about making sure that I'm informed. But like the internet is your oyster. Everything is out there to, to, to learn what you don't know yet, you know, to do research. When I say market research, I'm not asking you to do anything that's hard hitting. I'm asking you to ask a few people. If you're not sure what to post on social media, great. Go and ask them. If you're not sure what, you'd, what words to use to describe yourself, great. Go on Facebook right now and, and, and post this. Describe me in one word, go. Or describe me in one word, comment below. And by the way, you'll get a ton of engagement on that post, you're welcome. But you know, when you don't know the answer, ask your audience. So for me, you know, travel and all of that, the little nuances is just kind of something I learn the more I do it, and I do make lots of mistakes. <laughs> yeah, we've got a few more questions up front. Oh, in the back, right. Um, first off, thanks for today's session. It's been really good. Um, so I kind of want to backtrack real quick to something you mentioned in research. In all of your years of brand development and management, what would you tell us as emerging brand developers or you know personal branders? Um, what is the most difficult thing that we should focus on starting off to make our brand unique and actually stand out in today's world? Wow, 
great question, and we're all going to answer this. Yes. This, do you want to? You start. Do you have an idea? I have one idea. Let's um, hear it. One thought that jumped into my mind. A lot of times, I always get the question of how do I stand out. I'll, I'll generalize some of your question. A lot of it is how do I stand out? How do I make this stand out or me stand out or this personal brand? And I always tell people there's two things, concepts to it. A People tend to think standing out means doing something grand and just ridiculous. Sometimes, sometimes standing out is just doing the simple thing. You know, I say all the time, I, I have a group of students come in the studio, and these are high school students, and one young lady bent down and picked up a piece of paper that she saw on the floor. She stood out by doing the simplest act. So sometimes standing out doesn't always have to um, don't let that reverberate in your mind as like this thing that you have to do that's grand and I have to stand out. Sometimes it's, and then the other thing is being authentic. You know, you're already um, individual. You know, when you ask the question, well, how do I, um, you know, you, you, you don't have to try hard to be authentic. Just be you. Every single person on this planet is different. There are even twins. There's differences. And so... I, what really spoke to me about what you described is, does your real life personality match up with your online personality? And without even thinking about it until this morning, I think I do pretty well in that department because what you see is what you get. I literally, what, what I post is what my life is. Anybody who knows me knows that that's authentic to who I am. And I think there's something to you know, uh, that speaks to truth. That's why Cardi B is who she is, why she's so um, endearing and everything else is because she couldn't fake that if she wanted to. And, you know, that's her nonstop all day. <laughs> yeah. And that's you, when you touch it, the heart of truth. So I think to, to, for my version of, of the answer is standing out isn't necessarily this thing of trying to do something to poke out. Just try to speak more to your authentic self. I, authenticity, for sure. I think uh, I'm a visual artist, so um, the pictures that I want to take or that, that move me are pictures where you're not doing your Facebook smile, right? Mm -hmm. We all instantly, and even kids now at two years old, they instantly go. They get mad at me if I take the shot before they're in their Facebook. Yes, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I think we live in a culture that's posed. We create these personas of who we want the world to, to see us as. And I, I have a feeling, I personally feel this way, but I have a feeling that there's going to be a shift in that, in that your vulnerability, your authenticity, your real moments when you capture those and get those on display and talk yeah. from the heart and not just what your mind is saying you should be, I think that's really when you're going to connect with everyone. It's always the photos that probably the client thinks are the outtakes that will end up on your homepage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it's my job, it's like yeah, that's going right on your homepage. When you look to the side and smile, when you have that moment of vulnerability, right, technology gets in the way between you and me, right? The, the ability for us to be face to face, personality, how you say something, content, what you say. It's a privilege to be face to face now these days, right? Um, so online, technology gets in the way of that. So those moments, that, those authentic moments are ironically what we want now instead of the Facebook smile. My, uh, my tip or, or you know, my advice to answer your question would be a little reminder to make sure it's not about you, it's about them. So don't run to me at Hall of Fame over the next few days with your resume. I don't want your resume. I don't even look at them. What I would prefer is to build a relationship, mm -hmm. to build a friendship. Mm -hmm. Because by having that connection that's rooted in all of us serving others, this is a humble reminder even for people at the very top of their game. At the end of the day, we serve, don't yeah. we? <laughs> yeah. And I always, I always say a resume, me personally, I, I, I have a thing about resumes, but a resume tells people who you want them to think you are. Right. And your personality and who you are and how you 